the whole Texas 2K stuff, coronavirus stuff, and any of that other silliness. But uh, as long as I sound okay, we'll um, we'll see what we'll see what the deal is. Okay. Sound check. Sound check. Da, 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 da. Hello. 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 <laughs> so okay, real quick, let me get to it because um, apparently there is sound. So. Ended up going to Texas 2K. Took me 15 hours to get there, and it was a long ass trip. You, it takes me like 10 hours just to get out of Florida. Like from here to like, <clears throat> what's the name of that fucking town where Roy Jones lives? Pensacola, Pensacola, Florida. It is a, it is a freaking ride. It's a ride. So anyway, get there, Texas 2K, and um, you know, try to do a test and tune, and right off the rip, the Fairmont shakes the tires on one of the passes come back one of my exhaust tips fell out embarrassing come back and every time i try to launch the car it would just make this crazy stutter and stumble that i couldn't figure out ended up being uh, everyone's like missed your videos from texas 2k i did not make one video from texas 2k there was nothing to show you the car ran like absolute dog shit um come to find out that potentially a fuel line out of all things, man, a fuel line was being pinched every time I launched the car. See, the rear suspension needs a little work. I need a little more bar angle and, and, and make sure the rear separates. And what's happening, it's squatting really hard, which you don't want. And the car, uh, I think, based on getting under it, was pinching some fuel lines. So I definitely didn't get a, a good full pass in the car. The best I could do was a 9 at 151, and that sucks for that car. And uh, I got my ass beat by anyone that mattered. Uh, Mario, uh, I don't know how to pronounce his last name. Some guys are making fun of me. It's either Madrigal or Madrigal or Madrigal. Anyway, he, uh, I faced him in the uh, first round of the, I think it's a champ class or the sport class for um, streetcar. He got me no problem. Uh, I didn't have anything for him anyway. But I wish, you know, my car was running, you know, 100%. I didn't know what the hell the issue was. I know that the MAV signal kept wigging out like it just kept wigging out and i didn't know what the hell it was come to find out that potentially the pinching of the fuel line was causing fuel starvation momentarily momentary momentary fuel starvation and it would just go up 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 and then once the car stopped doing its squat bullshit it would just go down and it was fine but um i didn't figure that out until yesterday got into the car and i went motherfucker this thing was pinching the fuel line on the pinion like like literally when it was squatting that hard the fuel line was right above it and you could see the fuel line is squished and frayed in that area it was stupid it was just so dumb so i didn't know that till yesterday so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna try to hit up a rental whenever the tracks open again because of the covid fucking 19 craziness so while we were at texas 2k tuesday we were testing everything was fine wednesday we were watching some roll race and testing tune in between there and then we ended up hearing over the loudspeaker uh peter block blotch blach i don't know how to pronounce his last name b-l-a-c-h um he said that um due to the covid 19 scare that they're gonna have to cut Texas 2K short, which sucks for a lot of people that were only going to show up Saturday to get their qualifying passes in and then race on Sunday. A lot of people worked throughout the week and they were not going to, they were not going to, you know, be there all week. And I took a vacation week. I took a vacation week just so that I can attend Texas 2K. Unfortunately, it was literally a thousand bucks wasted on my part, not because of Texas 2K's fault. It's because my car just was acting up and I didn't realize the fuel line was being pinched uh, by the body uh, until too late. That absolutely sucked. So uh, a lot of people are like, oh, I had a great time. I didn't have a great time. I'm going to be honest with you. It fucking sucked. It fucking sucked throwing a thousand dollars down the drain by the time you rent the vehicle, gas, all that stuff, food. Actually, Lund Racing took care of me on food while I was at 2K. Thank you very much, uh, Senior, Junior, and all the guys. Um, and it was just, it was just kind of a waste. So hopefully if I get a rental down here, I'll get rental or it, whenever people stop freaking the fuck out over COVID-19 or coronavirus, I should be able to get back to the track and get some times. Then I'll video. I'm not going to video failures cause it's just stupid. And it, you know, I have some videos and I'll make a video of my, my whole trip, but I wasn't going to do that until I got back and I got relaxed. Today was my last day of vacation. So I got settled and tomorrow I'll be right back to work dealing with all you guys that have PMAS cold air intakes, flex tunes with what you thought were LU 47s, but are really stock injectors because you guys trust what people tell you. So 
I need somebody to, I need somebody to, actually, yeah, I'll talk about 2K real quick. So what impressed me the most about Texas 2K is people like Mario Madrigal, 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 um, Edwin Martinez, uh, Joe Holt, David Van Norris, and who else was over there? Um, that was in the semifinals. Um, Junior, Junior's car was also in the semifinals of the Heavy Street class, which I will talk about. Um, the fact that they can read their logs, everything's good. They're happy. They're like, uh, I, I love Edward Martinez. He has he has the best act. He goes, no, man, I launched on three pounds of boost, and it was okay. I didn't see any problems. So I looked at the log. Everything looks good, so I'm just going to go up and boost and see what happens later. And I was like, right on. Same thing with Mario. Mario was like, Boom, I looked at the logs, everything looks good. The only the only time they would come over and have Junior or anyone else look at logs is if they thought there was an issue. But everyone, people like, I love that, people like uh, um, Holt, Martinez, Madrigal, uh, and Van Norris were just on point with their cars. Tune's done, just add boost or take boost away or play with suspension. That is the ideal, ideal customer. Um, there were other people there that wanted logs looked at, tunes looked at based on what they saw. They're very easy peasy. So the racer seems to be very well informed and they got it. They got it absolutely, um, you know, figured out. And it's really nice to see that. Edwin Martinez's car was, in my opinion, uh, the most impressive car there. A fluid twin turbo kit. One of the first fluid twin turbo kits, same turbo, same everything. Um, the car out there running 843 with a uh, built bottom end, basically rods, pistons, stock sleeves. Super impressive at a buck 60. Mario's car, super consistent. That dude can chop down a tree. That guy uh, is definitely a racer, legit guy. David Van Norris running 919 like it, like it, like, like it's his job because he was playing the smart game. You know that car's quicker, but. He played the smart game. He fell into a class that he couldn't break out of, so he did the smart thing and won his class. Junior, with the Black Bean, the Whipple Supercharged uh, 18 Mustang Lund Development Vehicle, was in Heavy Street. Now, let me talk about heavy, the heavyweight class or Heavy Street, whatever they called it. So, real quick, uh, Root Beer gave me five bucks and says, order your Beecho Palette. <clears throat> okay, I don't know what that means. So, I got approached right around, I think it was Friday or, or Thursday. Some guy was kind of staring me down in the staging lanes. And he's like, I got to talk to you. And I don't know. I don't know who he was. I'm like, is he a fan or is he just some guy that I talk shit about? Come to find out, he was the one that actually, actually uh, thought of the heavyweight class. And he was the one that kicked out Mustangs from the heavyweight class. And he's like, hey, I got a bone to pick with you. I'm like, bone pick with me what did i do you know what the hell did i do <clears throat> so he said you know i don't like the fact that you were talking shit that we kicked out mustangs and i was like well why not you kicked out mustangs that met the minimum weight you kicked them out for the sheer fact that they were mustangs and he's like no 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 uh what happened was i my i those cars did not meet my intent of the class and i said I can't read your mind. I don't know what your intent of the class is. And he goes, well, my intent was to have somewhere where I can race. I have a CTSV, a heavy CTSV. I don't know if it's a twin turbo car or what. It's well into the nines, maybe high eights. And I wanted somewhere where a twin turbo Mustang wasn't going to show up and beat our ass. <clears throat> well, my thought process along that was, okay, so if a twin turbo Mustang that weighs 4,300 pounds busts everyone's ass, what's wrong with that? What is wrong with that? So I think they're going to work with someone like Junior because Junior's more level-headed than I am. I am very black and white. I'm like, hey, um, 4,200 pounds, uh, no turbos, single power adder, uh, boom, done. You can have literally anything you want go in there and, and drag some ass. But his intent was to have more of like a Charger, Challenger, CTSV class. But now that he saw that Junior's car or Lund Racing's car a single power rider Mustang with a 10R80 can run 880, 870s pretty easily at 4,275 pounds is what the car weighed at race weight. I think he's open to allowing those in there, but the rules are going to be very, you know, specific. So I think next year they're going to allow anyone, right, single power rider, as long as you meet the weight, but you got to know the platform. So he's going to work with someone like Junior and say, let me work with you to say, what can be or can't be allowed because there are some twin turbo mustangs out there that are already deep deep um 
you know, seven deep eight second cars. I think what he wants to prevent is the power glide guy, the turbo 400 guy. He wants a street car, probably the, you know, stock style transmission to go in there and do its thing. And the black car met all that criteria. Also, um, Miss Licabelli was out there, uh, that 1320 chick, she was out there. She qualified. She ran 960s, 950s. I'm not sure if we went into the 40s. So both Mustangs were out there at full weight running Whipple Superchargers, running a badass number. She had a stock motor. Junior had a built motor. Junior was going 870s, went to the semifinals where he unfortunately spun. But the guy who actually made up the class was very much a you know, didn't know that Mustangs can do this. He thought, ah, oh, shit, a power glide twin turbo Mustang is going to show up and beat everybody in the class. When in fact, you don't need all that stuff in a Mustang to, to be very quick. Now that really woke a lot of us up that there are some eight second Hellcats and demons out there. Sure. They have massive superchargers and I believe they have nitrous. I'm not hundred percent though, but they were 880 and the CTSV that junior lost against when he spun was like an 880, 90 car with a 2.3 supercharger. So it was really cool to see that that the heavyweight platform can run well into the eights. It was stacked. There was two, an A and B side. So basically, I he tried. I think he tried to. I don't want to say tried to come at me, but he he was like, "Hey, I got a bone to pick with you." And I'm like, "Well, if you leave the the rules that open to interpretation, then you boot Mustangs off. It looks like you're biased against Mustangs." Now next year, count on the fact if they allow Mustangs. It will be Mustang heavy. You got to be 4,200 pounds, I think. Single power adder, stock style transmission, whether it be 6R80, 10R80, whatever. The case is stock, so it doesn't really matter. So it'll be funny or it'll be interesting to see what they allow and what Junior, him, and Peter from Texas 2K can come up with for the heavyweight class because that class, in my opinion, is going to be pretty stacked if they get the rules right. And a lot of guys that run well into the eights or low nines have a shot if it's a stock style, single power rider, transmission, Mustang, Charger, Challenger, CTSV, V2, V3, whatever. It was really cool to see some of the cars in the class because they look like just regular street cars, full weight, because you could tell these guys were pushing them in the lanes and they were having a hard time pushing those big heavy cars, but it was it was cool to see. Anton Guzman says, what's up, brother? I just picked up a 11 GT500 performance pack, 2.6 up and a 123 millimeter intake. Uh, what would you do first for E85? Free full on exhaust or E85 boost to pump 1050s or return stuff for E85. A Anton Guzman, first thing I would do is get a Trinity 2.3 supercharger from a 1314 GT500, put it in there with a 2.4 pulley, MU52 injectors, twin boost to pumps, uh, free flow and exhaust, and you'll have a lot more fun. You'll make 650 to maybe 700. And you will not do that with the stock supercharger and all those other mods that you mentioned. So it needs to have a TVS on it, in my opinion. A blower is the first thing you should do on that thing. Hawaii Five O says, Alex, love the channel. Here's five bucks for some toilet paper. I don't understand how a pandemic and toilet paper have to do with each other. You're going to shit your brains out that much that you need that much toilet paper? Like, look. If you were out there buying toilet paper, you're a fucking moron. You're a mouth-breathing fucking moron. Sorry. If you're out there buying a lot of toilet paper, look, how much, uh, how often do you shit a day? Like, what is a normal amount of shit a day, right? Um, I eat, you know, whatever. I shit once a day, maybe two if I eat a lot. But if, are you guys shitting three or four times a day? Like, seriously? And then do you do you believe that if you don't have toilet paper, you will die of just shit, shitting on the toilet? Uh, uh, well, well, they're going to tell me to stay home for two weeks. So I need <laughs> seven pallets of toilet paper because I'm going to do nothing but shit all day. How are you going to shit that much? How about this? If you run out of toilet paper, ration it. Or take a fucking shower. Stand up, smush the shit between your cheeks, and go to the shower and stomp the shit down the grate if you have to. But no, you guys are like, I'm going to buy toilet paper. And you see the people buying toilet paper. You literally see the people buying toilet paper are slob-ass, nasty, mouth-breathing, trailer park-looking trash motherfuckers. And forgive me if you aren't and you did buy toilet paper. That just means you're fucking retarded retarded there are people out there that probably went to the store on a regular day and were like i need some toilet paper and it was gone and you know what they said oh that sucks i guess i'll wipe my ass with uh you know 
I don't know, uh, paper towels or something for the time being or wet wipes, which you should do. Or I'll just take a shower. <laughs> nope. Nope. You guys are insanely by. And then let's say this, you know, pandemic, which it isn't yet. Uh, I understand you guys are freaking out because you don't know what's happening and what what's the government not telling us. I get that. I get that. I get that. But when you have that much toilet paper in your shelves and you're like, what the fuck did I do? What the fuck? What the fuck did I do? How stupid am I? Like, you're going to look at that toilet paper when this is all over and they have a vaccine and they find out that you get a sore throat and you shit a little bit, you know, diarrhea. And you're like, I didn't need 99% of that shit. You're probably going to go, well, it's better safe than sorry. Really? Toilet paper? Better safe than sorry to have a bunch of toilet paper because you're too stupid to realize that wiping your ass constantly isn't going to save you from dying of uh, coronavirus? <laughs> ah, what the fuck is wrong with you? Wow. So America is stupid. I've come to the conclusion that America is stupid. If the news says something, they freak the fuck out. There are people, there are people out there that, you know what, who I think is secretly liking this, secretly liking this, preppers. Preppers are, I think, it, I told you so, I told you, they, they were, next thing is, they're coming after your guns. And then they bought up all the guns, which, look, I'm not against guns at all. I'm not against guns at all. But the preppers are out there like, they almost want it to happen, like, Yep, I can't wait for it to happen. I, mm -hmm. And yes, they all have a southern accent. Um, but yeah, it was just it was just blew my mind. Now, in Houston, when I was in Houston at uh, Baytown, Texas, UK, nobody was freaking out. Nobody was out there freaking the fuck out, going crazy. On the way back, nobody was freaking out, fucking going crazy. And then I went here, and no one is freaking out, going crazy. They did close school, so I totally understand the parents freaking out. Like, what the hell am I going to do? I have a full-time job. I probably don't have the option to work from home and their job is sometimes sending them home if they don't have the uh, option to, to, to work from home so they're they're screwed they're absolutely screwed and I totally get it I'm lucky um, I'm very lucky I absolutely can work from home and nothing changes for me I just I, I literally walk down to the store because they closed my gym check that shit out so I walked to get a little exercise to the store, got me some snacks, came back everything was as normal there's normal traffic normal everything seems normal. But if you listen to the news, it's as if shit's going down so bad that it's going to it's going to inevitable and at the end of the world. And holy shit, Italy's fucked. Well, Italy's fucked because they're Italy. <laughs> I mean, have you been to Italy? <laughs> I haven't for that reason. You get sick. You're fucked. You will die. Oh, uh, you're uh, 80 years old and you got the uh, coronavirus. You're fucking dead. They might as well just shoot you in the head. <clears throat> Unreal. Unreal. How stupid people have gotten. Holy shit. So. I got you caught up on Texas 2K from my point of view. Um, told you a little bit about coronavirus. <laughs> and I'm just going to talk just general shit today. I'm just going to answer regular questions and just go at it because what, an, what a crazy week. The next thing is going to be curfews, like like literal curfews. Like here, when you have a hurricane, the cops are like, if you're outside doing anything, you can get arrested. I get that for looting and all that stuff, but good luck on a nice 80 degree day down here in Florida telling people stay your ass in at eight o'clock at night. They ain't going to do that shit. They're going to do whatever the fuck they want. Uh, Ford, Ford is all of her goddamn names. Their names are shit. 11 gen two swap after coasting at low RPM. As soon as I hit the gas, a loud pop is heard from the exhaust. Any ideas? L and M cams, ported 18 manifold, long tubes and ported heads. I wonder if, um, when your injectors are turning back on, meaning after D cell, when the injectors turn back on, there's some unburned exhaust in the, obviously unburned gas in the exhaust and it ignites the moment you get back in it. I'm not, I'm not sure if the cams are making that more of an issue, but I think that that has to do with it. It's mostly coasting fuel shut off or diesel or diesel fuel shut off. Meaning when you let off the gas, the injector shut off. If there's any raw fuel in there and, it, and you give it gas and it pops, that might be what's happening is you're igniting everything that's in the exhaust. Lightning Blue 5 says, hey, Alex, I have an 18 Mustang GT six speed tuned by London. It's throwing a code PO61B. The RPM won't go past 2000 RPMs and it feels like it's going to stall getting out of first. Now I'm going to show you something. If you Google PO, 61B and you hit enter. It says, uh, what the fuck? Internal module control calculation performance. I think that's one of those bullshit DTCs. 
in my opinion, reload the tune because it sounds like you're in fail safe, whether it be a throttle body issue or a TPS issue or something like that. It's obviously not a circuit code, but I would just reload the tune and see if it does it. And then if it still does it, hit up the tune, the ticket system and tell them everything you have installed and verify everything you have installed. Don't just tell them you got this, verify everything you got. Oh, I bought injectors from a buddy and he said they were LU 47s. Verify that. Open them up, look at the bottom, make sure there's six holes and then there are long body Bosch. That's how you know it's an LU 47. Hey, Alex, I have an 18. I already got that. That's Lightning Blue 50 said that. Um, for the spot on TP Hoarder Rant, LOL, Sean, Sean and Moat. Thank you very much. Hey, Alex, uh, does Lund offer a Ghost Cam tune for 6RD S550 Whipple and free flowing exhaust? And if it does, will it make me gay if I want one? Yes, you are absolutely gay if you want one. And yes, we provide a tune for that. Do not expect it to drive well. It will chop, chug, and sound like a cammed car. And it will drive as such. It is only meant for you to. Put it in park and chop around at the parking lot. Not a drivability tune. <clears throat> uh, Christopher Kazeel says, Alex, badass channels. Great job evolving into the go to YouTube spitting facts. Been building my MTD2 car via your most humble opinions over the years. Man crush. <laughs> no homo. No Camaro. <laughs> Very good. So basically, he's been building a car based on my recommendations. I appreciate that. Um, I'm not the smartest guy out there. I'm not the most knowledgeable guy out there. And I'll admit that. But I'm the, probably the best guy to bring you information in a simple way. And yeah, I'm wrong a lot, and I'll correct my errors. But fuck it, you know. Who else are you gonna listen to? Some guy that, some guy that just does burnouts and, and <laughs> some guy that just does burnouts and bought a bought a racetrack just to do burnouts. I mean, badass shit. But I see that channel for two seconds, and I want to just fucking I want to lick like a handrail that was grabbed by every coronavirus uh, you know holder out there. It was awful. No offense. It's just not my thing. Burnouts. It's a, uh, burnouts. Who gives a fuck about burnouts? Holy shit. Uh, Tommy Gunn. Tommy Gunn uh, says uh, 13 GT Illuminator in a Hellion Twin 62 system with four triple pump E85 ID 1700s. Plasma man intake. <laughs> Why'd you go with a plasma man? <laughs> you can only put about 25, 26 pounds of booze through that illuminator unless it's sleeved and o-ringed so the plasma man is useless as shit love ya but you know plasma man is good when you're gonna do 35 30 35 plus psi through it otherwise you are not making any more power you're just saying i got a plasma man on it plasma man plasma man how much boost do you run through it 10 psi why the fuck do you do that <laughs> i still didn't finish your question pbh4 200 vikings 355 gears air full on are are high eights possible oh yeah no problem like easy um we have a guy collier uh, mr brian collier uh has a vmp tvs at 980 wheel it went 880 887 at like 150 something 155 154 or something like that so yeah it's definitely possible but that plasma man intake dude talk about blowing three thousand dollars on something totally unnecessary should have got an 18 manifold stuck it in there and should have you you'd be fine Cuban Coyote, what's up, Alex? Got the fuel hat and it came with the wrong pump, so I sent it back and the new one will be here Friday. Didn't want to send a log without the wrong part. Smart man. Get the right parts installed in the Paxton Coyote build that you got going on. And I'll be I'm back tomorrow, so I should be able to see those logs easily. Max de Oliveira says, channel support, keep up the hard work, Alex. Thank you, Max. Martin Salgado says, Hey Alex, uh different gen coyote needs certain mods for E85 tunes. But why Gen 3 doesn't need any additional mods? I don't know the exact details. But how do the dual injector set help? Martin Salgado, I love you. I love you. It's math, right? So let me just move these screens around because I'm kind of getting confused. Martin, there are 16 injectors. 16 injectors in a Gen 3. There are, there are 8 in a Gen 1 and a Gen 2. The Gen 1 needs an LU-47. The Gen 2, if you keep the stock manifold, doesn't tend to need it. It has a bit of a stronger, I think, a stronger pump, a similar size injector as Gen 1, but for whatever reason, they seem to be okay with the stock injector. But if for headroom and an aftermarket manifold, I want you to buy some LU-47s minimum because their spray pattern is super favorable for NA and E85 applications. So Martin, Gen 3 has eight direct injectors, eight port injectors. So you don't need more fueling. It's done. Here it is. You have 16 injectors on Gen 3, eight direct 8 port. That's why you don't need any mods on Gen 3. 
Craftsman says, any word on the three valve coyote swap harness from PBH? Yeah, um, I was talking to Jake about it today. Oh, gosh. I was talking about it to Jake, and I said, hey, Jake, what's up with this thing? And he act he actually has a bit of a delay going on with uh, manufacturing. It's not easy just to, oh, let me just make a bunch of harnesses. You have to mass produce them, test them to make sure that they're good, and then sell them to the general public. But he is trying to slowly roll them out there, so they're not that far away. Look, don't rush this process. Wait, wait wait because what's the alternative buying a control pack or buying a coyote mustang just wait 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 there is no rush it doesn't matter if you don't get it done this summer the, don't rush a project because the last thing you want to do is rush it my fairmount took four almost five years to build and i'm finally enjoying it so just take your freaking time wait for the right parts to come out because you don't have to be the first kid on the block to have a swap in that three valve have the first harness i hate and I'm not saying you're doing this. I hate people that contact us or me and say, I want to be the first to do this. And I want to get all this attention. So are you willing to work with me to be the first at this? The first? No, no, no. Because there's no money in it for me. And I know. Oh, what the fuck? You're only about the money? Yep. Yep. Because when I go pay my rent, they like money. They don't like rep. Hey, I got rep. Here's some rep. Can you pay in rep? No, I can't pay in rep. I saw that you did a YouTube video of the first tune, this and this and that. So you know what? Your rent's good this month. No, that never happens. Um, Aaron Brown says Chambers country, the country that Royal Purple Raceway is in Chambers County, the county that Royal Purple Way Raceway is in is now in the curfew midnight every night. And if you're below 18 years old, you can't be out past midnight. Thank God I got out of there early. <clears throat> but again, just unreal how stupid the people are getting. Now, do I think it's a real threat? I don't know. But if according to the numbers, it's not any worse than the regular flu, I'm just going to live my fucking life and just have at it. Some people that are testing positive for it don't even know they have it. So that kind of shows you how much of an issue it really is. Now I get it. The older you are, the easier you are susceptible to having a bad time from it. But I'm just going to live my life. And I don't have kids or anything like that to worry about. So I'm just going to do my thing. Just don't, 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 don't do stupid shit like normal stuff. Like just walking around with just unwashed hands, just touching nasty shit. I do that anyway. Like when I go to a public bathroom, I'm elbowing things. I don't shake anybody's hands because I don't like any people. Um, so I think, I think, I think I'm pretty safe. <clears throat> in Zane Mustang, Mr. Zane hung out, dude, in Zane Mustang and his other two friends hung out all weekend and they're the absolute perfect, perfect, uh, if you want to say fans or whatever, I did lose my temper a couple of times, not at them, I just said, hey guys, my car's not running well and I just lost my shit inside, I said, you know, and then they, they just kept their distance. And then when things were good, they would come by, show me a video, talk, hang out. Super cool guys. Supported, took videos, hung out the whole weekend, guys. They hung out the whole weekend. Perfect. When 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 things were scrambling in the in the pits, they were away. When we were chilling and relaxed, they were in there with us, just hanging out, having a good time. And I made sure that I talked to them and I made a post on Instagram thanking them. They were super supportive, just the best, perfect type of people that understood how to hang out so in zane mustang i appreciate you hanging out all weekend with us he said for the lund decal y'all gave out good hanging out with you all week alex great people in that lund camp uh junior did very well everything considered junior did do really good everything considered junior uh went up there and broke a drive shaft uh for first day of testing second pass dakota and nick Perciello almost died because they were like they got stuck to the track, so I hope Dakota's okay because he literally fell and Perciello almost lost his socks. It was great to watch, but um, Junior did great uh, given the, everything that was going on. Senior, killer job crewing both cars. Senior was crewing the black car and the Fairmont. Um, the Fairmont didn't need much. I, it was just diagnosing what the hell the issue was. The black bean needed you know, some plug work, it needed ice, it needed, you know, uh, the, the trans uh, underneath area monitor just to make sure everything was good. <clears throat> everything was really cool uh, that to see Junior go up there in heads up racing and uh, do really well, make it to the semifinals on a pretty competitive class. Gallo Bravo says, buy a gun, Alex. I'm not going to buy any fucking gun. Because what happens if you don't have a gun, right? Let's say, for instance, shit goes down. Are you going to carry your gun with you at all times? And if for any instance you're in a situation where you got to use it and you can't, it falls off, it gets taken away from you, you got to learn to fight. So, but I get it. Look, I'm a big advocate of guns. You want to have guns, have at it. I just grew up in a different area. And if you show, if you show a gun to anyone and you don't shoot that motherfucker dead, you got to watch your back for the rest of your life. So that's why I'm like, I can't have a gun. No way. 
But insane Mustang, thanks for hanging out all weekend. Appreciate it. Mario Madrigal. Is it Madrigal? Madrigal? Uh, he says, here's 20 for, all, for the fuel line. <laughs> thanks a lot. I wanted to race here for a while and called you out when you got there. Didn't push the call out when I saw you having issues. Was luck of the draw when I got you first round. Rematch soon at 100%. Yeah, Mario, um, if you attend any other events in Texas that are Mustang or Ford specific, I'll do my best to get down there to you. I think it's only um, fair to make sure we run each other because he is just a great dude, great guy. And I like competitive racers like that, that are good people. Um, and his crew seemed to be pretty legit. There was a funny video that was shared about a guy that he raced in a, like a Lexus that it kind of, kind of go making its rounds. It's very good. Um, I guess the guy was like, I'm watching this guy and like a UFC fighter, I'm not going to take my hands off him. I'm going to, I'm not going to take my eyes off him. I'm looking at him. I'm looking right at him. And then the car spun, unfortunately. So it was just kind of a funny video, but it was, it was, it was entertaining to watch. But Mario, yeah, for sure. I'd love to run you back once the car is uh, running good. And uh, hey, you got me fair and square. I got my ass beat gap big time by uh, Mario. His car was running really nice all weekend. He's good on the light too. You can't fuck with Mario. He is good on that light. So do not sleep. If you're racing Mario, get on that light. But yeah, Mario, uh, we'll we'll race again. I'll try to get get out there if there's any Mustang specific events or if you make it to Mod Nats. Tommy Gunn says thanks for all all you do, Alex. You're welcome, Tommy. Hopefully that car will go eights. Uh, Illuminator on if Illuminator makes 900, Illuminator will make 900 no problem. If the car weighs 34, 3500 pounds, that bitch will run eight seventies, eight sixties if you can get the sixty foot right. Man of War says, here's a little for the TP. Ha ha, some Canadian, I don't know how much Canadian money is worth anymore. Isn't Trudeau, like, <laughs> where are you at? And isn't it funny that all these CEOs are stepping down at the same time? That's another thing that is kind of funny. Someone had a conspiracy theory about, you know, uh, what do you call it? Underage sex scandals and stuff like that. And then all these high end, you know, CEOs are just falling off. And the uh, coronavirus is like a thing to thwart the economy. It was just like this layered, crazy thing. But uh, I'm not going to doubt it. I'm just like, wow, it's all coincidental. Aaron Brown says, I haven't been able to get in contact with Midnight for my twin turbo kit install. I call Heidman Performance in Houston. Any thoughts on them? What should I do to get the car into Midnight? I mean, I don't know. You can get in touch with Manuel Gomez really easy. You go to Facebook or their midnight, I think they have a midnight performance page. Hit them up. Say, Orale, vato, quiero, que onda? <laughs> I want to drop off the car and uh, I got some money. That's really not that hard to do. <laughs> so I think it's pretty easy to get a hold of. Daniel Hernandez is gay, says, Will Lun tune any turbo setup like a Hellion on three or with a setup with a turbo 400 glide 6R80 combo? Also, you take into account altitude conver conversions too. So Daniel Hernandez is gay. Um, yes, we tune any turbo setup. Yes, transmission doesn't matter. Altitude is 100% dictated by the airflow coming across the map. So think about it this way. Let's say I tune your car at 20 PSI at sea level, 20 PSI sea level. That same exact car is probably gonna make 15 PSI, <clears throat> 15 PSI or 16 PSI at altitude. Why would I have to retune that? Why would I have to retune that? You know, the air coming across the MAF is less. So the MAF curve is dialed in based on airflow up to 20 PSI. So you're gonna probably have to turn up the wick in the car at altitude to make the same power you were making at sea level, why would I have to retune that? The math takes care of that. Same thing as a map sensor. The map sensor does the same thing, <clears throat> and it does account for altitude. Again, Ford sells a GT500 with the same tune in California than the one in Colorado, than the one in Chicago, than the one in Florida, than the one in Germany, because altitude is compensated for by the stock stuff. With math cars, it's the math. With uh, speed density cars, is the MAP map sensor. Um, so I really don't think I, I still don't understand why people don't get that yet. I still don't understand why people say, "Well, I'm in altitude, so I need a retune." No, you know, you know, you need more boost if you want to make the same power. Well, I want more timing at altitude. Well, if you get more timing and less airflow, then you drive that sucker down to say sea level, and you keep the same tune in it you'll blow it up. <laughs> so how about just turn up the boost to what it was tuned for? And if you live in altitude and you never leave Denver or Arizona or slightly higher altitude areas, we'll tune it for that altitude where it sits on the dyno and leave it. There is no reason to do anything else. Now, if you go down to sea level after your car was tuned in altitude first, there is a lot more available air at sea level. So be mindful of that. 
because if you go out there at the same setting you were at way in the mountains, yeah, it's going to be make a whole bunch more steam and it might blow up. So you got to be careful. You might have to lower boost at sea level if you've been tuned in altitude. And then the compensation is what kind of bothers me when cars dyno make dyno pulls in uh, altitude. <clears throat> They make, you know, insane numbers, 1,100, 1,200. And then I'm like, why don't you bring that car down to sea level and have the correction factor be a lot less? And we'll see what that car really makes. You rarely see that nowadays. Martin Salgado says, oh, I kind of figured that. I just didn't know if all 16 could be the same time, could be used at the same time. That is what I meant. Don't overthink it. Leave the calibrators thinking about what the injectors do. Let us worry about that stuff. You just know that Gen 3, you don't need much to run E85, even with a Cobra Jet setup. Think about it this way. I have LU-47s in my 18 Mustang, and it makes 720 rear wheel horsepower. LU-47s. Why? Because it has eight other injectors to rely on. Street Driven GT500 says, I drive for a living, and I haul groceries. We have plenty of groceries. If everyone would just chill, and we'll all survive. Stay safe and wash your hands. That's it. Stay safe. Wash your hands. Shut the fuck up. That's it. What's your thoughts on the quick shift, quick six trans control? And can you use it to swap 6 or 80 in the 2012 Mustang with an MT82 and keep your manual ECM? Shane Turner, I'm going to answer this for everybody. And I'm going to go on a limb that says that I'm going to go on a limb <clears throat> and say the Quick 6 is not a good control unit for a 6R80 unless you are wide open throttle shifting. And even then, and, and like you look, you use sport mode. To this day, I have not seen a Quick 6 transmission take big power cars, drive correctly because look, the OEM operating the, the stock transmission control is super elaborate, super elaborate. It is throttle position based. It is, there is um, clutch fill times. There's torque transfer times. There's adaptive tables. There's um, upshift schedule based on OSS and throttle position. I just, all that stuff, the quick six plain and simply cannot do. It cannot do it properly. It might be able to go one, two, three, four, five, six. But then when you go wide open throttle, can it apply the right pressure and then the oncoming and the offgoing pressure correctly? Or does it just peg pressure at everything and just let the gears happen? The quick six is not, I repeat, it is not recommended by me. I'm not speaking for anyone else. No other companies that I'm tied to or that I work for. The quick six, I do not recommend the quick six to control any 6R80 transmission that makes any decent power, period. Oh, but this guy said, cool, cool story. Awesome. <clears throat> hey, Alex, the ported 18 manifold worth it? Is, it? is it a free revision to get it done during the Lund revision period? No. So if you have a 18 manifold, that is an aftermarket manifold to that vehicle. You have to pay. If you already have an 18 manifold tuned by us in a Gen 2 car, you do not need any revisions after it's ported. Just like we talked about the math, the math compensates for additional airflow. So you do not need an additional tune. You can log it and say, hey, how does it look? We'll take a look at it. And as long as it's within the revision period and you paid the upcharge for that manifold, you should be good to go. <clears throat> Ford LS or Ford, Ford is or AL, Alex, ALHR means a love-hate relationship. Ford is a love-hate relationship. Is there anything I can do about the exhaust popping? Tuner says you can't tune out exhaust pops. Yeah, you can. Tell them to make timing a little higher in the uh, low load, low load, um, low RPM regions. Like if it's like negative 20 or negative what, just make it like negative 10 so it doesn't pop and ping. And it depend and I'm not going to tell him which tables to do it in. If he, yes, you can absolutely turn off any decel popping if you want to. Um, some people actually want it. You're the you're one of those that actually don't want it. It's crazy. <clears throat> Um, Daniel Hernandez is gay says, thanks, man. The reason I ask is because I'll be going through, uh, twins turbo 400 next year. And I live in Albuquerque 5,500 above sea level. Yeah, brother, we got you covered. That's not a problem. We tune cars everywhere, all over the place, high altitude, low altitude, Dubai, Qatar, Russia, Germany. We don't have to make huge revisions for altitude. You just have to pull it down more to make good power because there's less available air. <clears throat> RS3 for me, God damn, pay me a bunch of money says, Lunch for you in Dakota, because you're badass in Dakota for getting me 60 more wheel horsepower on 93 and 70 more on MS-109. I went from 645 on 93 and 670 on 109 to 705, 
556 on 93 and 740 on MS 109. Make sure you buy him lunch. Lun for the motherfucking win. Okay, uh, I'll uh, hit him up on the PayPal and you know send him the money and uh, he should be good to go for tomorrow for Wawa. They all go to Wawa when it comes to um, lunch up there at Lun HQ. Iron Bull says, Alex, I'm cheap and not going to pay a shop 130 an hour to install my 170 degree thermostat. If I do it myself, can I drive with no issues for two hours to the shop for a dyno tune? As long as you don't have any air in the system, Iron Bull, I don't see it being an issue at all. <clears throat> YouTube Corrupt Enter Free Speech says, should I go with the 132 millimeter throttle bar or the 150? 132. I'm not even going to answer the rest of your question. All right, because I read the rest of your question. 132. The gain between the 132 and the 150 at like... A thousand horsepower car is like eight, eight or nine from 132 to 150. Hardly worth the additional four or 500 bucks that it costs. So 132 is more than enough. No, more than enough. <laughs> Edwin Martinez, I'm still laughing at my imitation. He does. He has like a, he's very well-spoken. Um, I'm not saying that Mexicans aren't well-spoken, but Edwin Martinez, the way he talks, it's like, you don't expect, you don't expect them to say the things he says. He goes, um, I'm leaving on 11 pounds of booze or three pounds of booze. And then I ramp it up. And then he says like all the right vernacular. And I'm just like, wow, okay, he, he, he gets it. And I'm not surprised, you know, that he says it because he's Mexican. I'm surprised he knows so much. And I think he really pays attention. Junior and him work together a long time. Junior is his tuner. So Junior is going to give him the details and he absorbs them and applies them to his vehicle. Remember, Edward Martinez went eight on a stock motor. 890 something on a stock motor and he has incrementally grown with that car and it's cool to see a, a old school fluid kit get it done and edwin shows up has one or two crew members they get it done he doesn't even bother us for logs until he has a question you know he goes oh i did this and i did something on the third three and four shift and we look at it it's oh it's converted lockup or whatever and the car is clean simple runs an 840 He's good on the light. It it, it, it lights up real quick, uh, meaning it, it doesn't take a while to spool the turbos. Really cool to see him out there um, having a bunch of fun and repping Shrek Motorsports and repping Lund Racing. Shrek had a big crew out there. They had a bunch of fast cars. Up and coming shop seems to be really pumping out some cars. I know a Triangle Speed, uh, Triangle Speed Shop tunes a lot of their cars, and that's a great relationship they have going on for them. If we can get in there and tune some of his customers' cars, we'll be happy to do so also. There's no beef there. He's a very good builder, and the guys around him represent him real well. So shout out to those guys because um, they repped really well at Texas 2K. <clears throat> uh, Brad Boss says, dumb question. Uh, I'm going to grab some 6GR wheels in a 10-inch. Can I fit a 305 on them, or am I an idiot? No, you could, of course you can fit 305 on them. If it's a 10-inch, 305s are fine. 305-35 or 305-30, depending on the tire um, and the sidewall and how you want it to look. Richard Alvarado says, What did you think about the underground racing Lambos, or did you see them run? Yeah, I saw them all run. Um, <laughs> it, Your brain doesn't make sense of what's happening. <clears throat> if, you're, if you're standing on the side... And you see a UGR Lambo get up on the uh, on the anti lag and take off from the last cone, and it just accelerates to 230 plus miles an hour at the end of the track. Your brain goes, "I don't know how that can happen." What is even more impressive, guys, is it stops without a parachute. He goes from 230, slows it right down with those big ass carbon brakes, and that bitch comes to a nice whoop. It just stops. Drives it back to the pits like nothing happened. The crew is very minimal. They just look over logs, touch a couple things, and then they're right back out there. I'm like, wow, wow. Whereas my a tech and piece of junk, uh, you got to come back and look through the whole log. You probably got to fix a couple of rattles and panels that came loose, and that thing was just moving. Now, some of you might say, well, of course, it's a 300, 400 plus thousand dollar build. I get it, but it still impresses me. It still has to get built, tuned, and perform, and it did all of that, all of the UGR Lambos, like super top-notch shit. Louis Lara says, hey, Alex, uh, I hope vacation has gone well. It has not. <laughs> I have a Gen 1, and I want to add 100 shot of nitrous. What is all required to run that on E85? Just about. You guys tuned my 18 F-150 in a 150, in a 150, and it just needed a bat for fueling. Yeah, so LU-47s, a booster pump just for headroom because I don't want to rely on the stock pump. Um, boosted pump, LU-47s, 
And yeah, I don't see why we can't just give you a nice 100 shot tune. That'll be super safe too. 100 shot on a Gen 1 Coyote with E85, it'll be super happy and it probably can get into the low 11s, high 10s if it's an auto. Um, and it has free flowing exhaust, good intake manifold like a Boss or an 18, uh, good gears and a converter. I don't see why it can't be a solid 10 second car. Mm, man, <clears throat> Mr. Physical says, can Lund get me the sauce? So stupid, the sauce. <laughs> Forgot to mention those gains came from just upgrading from a v to a VMP Twin 67 and a PMAS cold air intake. Car is happy. RS3 for me. Dude, the 67 millimeter in conjunction with the big cold air intake is a huge jump than the stock Twin 60 and the Roush stock 110 millimeter closed air box. PMAS, Twin 67, that's all you need for a car in the 800... I mean, even 850 and down, that's all you need. Anything above that, you might want to start looking at slightly bigger stuff. But if you're going to live in that zone, that car is going to be super happy there for a long time. <clears throat> so Chris Gorzinki, Gorzinki says, uh, deciding between hand-ported 18 manifold or hand-ported boss, which one would you recommend for Pro Charger setup? Love the boss look and it don't care about the hood change, but if it's less efficient, then I'll go 18. I think, I think you're kind of like splitting cunt hairs at that point. I think you're going to be good with either or, okay? The boss intake manifold does well. A ported boss intake manifold with forced induction does well. The 18 manifold, I think, is just cheaper. That's that. I think that's the allure. It, it's just cheaper, and I don't think it performs that much better than the a ported Boss 302. It performs very well, but the price, the price, the price is what is enticing about the 18 manifold. So I think you're good with both. It's just about how you want it to look under the hood in my opinion. Coyote Fury says, I tried C85 over the weekend for the first time in my 18 on my Lundy 85 r tune. Wow, night and day from Pump E. Eh, not really, unless your Pump E is garbage. If your Pump E is 70%, the C85 is going to feel good. But I don't see a huge difference between 85% tested pump ethanol versus C85. Uh, I just haven't seen a huge gain. Some gain, but not huge. Michael Charlton says, Alex, looking at Beefcake Stage 2 packs and kit with a Stage 1 E85 fuel system for my 15 performance package MT82 free-flowing exhaust E85 now. What can I expect to, what can I expect to make going with this setup? 1050X is okay. What plugs? Thanks, bro. <clears throat> so 1050Xs are fine. NGK 6510s are recommended or brisk 14YSs. 12s are for big boost stuff. 10s are for really big boost stuff. So brisk 14s are fine for your setup. Brisk 12s if you want a colder plug. Brisk 10s if you're a badass motherfucker. Or good old-fashioned NGK 6510s. Gap them at 25 thousandths. And you're going to be fine for a very long time. And on E85 and a Paxton through a manual, let's say, with E85 and a 3.6 pulley, it'll be making close to 750 to 750 to 800 horsepower, give or take how much timing we give you and how happy the car is. So it's going to make good jam on a 3.6. 3.6, you can make close to 700 on pump gas with the without the, the intake, and it'll make close to 800 on E85 with 22 or so degrees of timing with a 3.6 pulley. Very good. That was nice. Um... Okay, David Martin says, if the quick shift six isn't good for a six R80, then what is a stock operating system, a stock coyote computer? He says, I am swapping a 07 GT motor and trans, a stock operating system. So if you have an 07 GT, wait, what? A 07 GT motor and I'm swapping an 07 GT, mo a three valve? So you're going to put a three valve? You're going to put a six R80 behind a three valve? <laughs> Not a coyote? <laughs> Get a coyote in there. <clears throat> if you have a coyote, <laughs> I guess I don't understand the question, David Martin. You're being on the vague side. Let me look. Let me scroll up. And so you'd have to spend more money getting my attention. Um, David Martin, did you did you pay already? Mm, let me see, David Martin. Because your question doesn't make sense. So you, you want to put a 6R80 behind a 3 valve. Is that what you're saying? <clears throat> that, 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 that doesn't make sense. <laughs> like at all. And I don't want to control it with a quick 6. The only thing I want to control a 6R80 with is a stock computer whether it be a gen 1 gen 2 or if motec i know i know it's crazy stupid money but that's the only aftermarket operating system that i go badass shit it won't fry it because i i met the programmer i met the guy that developed the 6r80 calibration and he knows more about the 6r80 than most so i trust that he wrote a badass program the quick six i have heard nothing but nightmares about the quick six now if you want to shift it 
one, two, three, four, five, six. I know this guy that has a Baja truck, twin turbo EcoBoost truck, uh, somewhere in Arizona or whatever, and he uses the quick six in sport mode, and all he does is one, two, three, four, five, six, and racing it, racing it, racing it. I guess that's okay, but if you want to like drag race it and have it go one, two, and then drive it normally around the street, get ready to get fried, just to, to just to invest in like people like um, Ray Bestas and stuff, because you're gonna be providing them with a ton of money for clutch replacements on the 6R80. Ask me how I know that shit. You know who I'm tied to. You know who I'm close to. You know who we tune. So <clears throat> the quick six, in my opinion, is a no-go for 6R80 transmissions. Zach Davis says, hey, Alex, what's the best cold air intake on a Gen 1 Coyote Cobra Jet setup? I currently have the Ford Racing one and IETs are through the roof. Dude, that or the PMAS is the only the only one I recommend. The only one I recommend. That or the PMAS Cobra Jet setup is the only one I recommend. Don't ask me about anyone else. And yeah, IATs are going to be high because you have an open air element under the hood. It's just going to be high, period, um, in hot weather climate. Ethan Luke says, bought an 2 GT, has a DSS motor, blower cams, TKO 600, trans, built, rear end, and a TI trim blower, return soft fuel system. Should I throw it on 85 and pull it down to 27 or sell and get a boosted 5.0? Sell it and get a boosted 5.0. Trust me, the 2 GT is cool, I guess, but just get a boosted 5.0, dude. Trust me, you're going to be seconds faster than the two valve or is it a two valve three valve no it's a two valve oh my god it's a two valve jesus yeah fuck yeah get that thing out of there that thing gone get that thing out of your fucking life trust me <clears throat> someone said what happened to that c8 the c8 broke a uh axle but another c8 somewhere else went 11 one no yeah 11 oh two with a drag pack it had sticky tires and a skinny and it went on the stock tune 1102 don't think that corvette at texas 2k is the the me, the, the measuring stick forget that car that car had a lot going against it there's another c8 somewhere running 11 oh do not sleep when gt 500s are stock going 10 7 and a stock na corvette is going 11 oh Get ready for some shit talking once they really start to figure that Corvette out. Um, yeah, I was disappointed when I saw that Corvette uh, break. And I was disappointed when I saw it run 12-1. It was on stock tires. But the one that when a racer gets a hold of a car, you're, he's going to squeeze the most out of it. And this guy, no offense to him, did not seem like he was like, a racer should have had a sticky tire on it not a street tire to pull up all the prep it's cool that it showed up at 2k and all everyone was trying to get the clickbait and they was trying to get their their cameras in the car i was like it's on a fucking street tire what's it gonna do on a hundred shot and then it's sure enough it just broke an axle thank you stoneface for the channel support i appreciate it uh david martin says i have a coyote and a 6r80 going into an 07 then buy a ford racing control pack buy a ford racing control pack gen one or buy a power by the hour May, uh, automatic control pack call them up and say hey man i got an 07 got a coyote motor and a 6r80 going into an 07 what do i need pezzo or christian or perdomo are going to say this is what we recommend with these things and this is what you'll need and these are the parts and if you want power steering ac and anything else and an accessory drive and this and this and that here it is call them up tomorrow trust me you're going to save yourself a bunch of headaches Do you guys still have the rev limiter tune for automatics? <laughs> we can raise your rev limiter if you have an automatic, but we don't know why you'd want to do that. That's really weird. Um, thank you. What are you making on your packs? And okay, they're talking to someone else. Um, Ford's uh, love-hate relationship said, but E85 requires 30% more fuel, so bigger injectors are usually needed as well as a return style fuel system. You can usually get away with a fuel pump voltage booster on 93 like I said, 650 to 700, right. Okay, they're talking fuel system, so they're talking to each other. Very nice. Crowd Control Coop says, Hey, Alex, love the channel. I've been following you for a while. I have a 19 GT PP2 Mustang. Nice car, and I love the wheels on those cars. Just got a DMARC CAI. Ooh. <laughs> a VMP Twin 69 throttle body, ported Cobra Jet, Corsa long tubes, and Corsa FFE. E85 and Lund tune, of course. Horsepower guesstimate. 480, uh, 480 to 490. If it's really happy, it might touch... 500 um because that seems to be a nice nice combo actually yes it's ported cobra jet course of long tubes e85 lun tune hort yeah if you're on a good day and a good dyno a bit of a happy dyno i think you might be able to touch 500 or low 
four hundreds. I'm sorry, uh, high four hundreds, low five hundreds seems to be the norm. God damn, I gotta shut this off. Everyone's like hitting me up. And yes, I was swiping right like a motherfucker in Texas. Didn't find shit. Didn't find shit. Nobody's that was down anyway. Uh, Alejandro Flores, are all two sensors required to be angled 385? They are at 90 degree angle on my ARH long tube headers 2017 GT. They're not required. They're not required. Like I had um, Cook's long tubes in my red car. They were angled nicely and I never had a failure in the O2s. But Donnie, Donnie uh, Stock 5.0 had a 14 Mustang and he had 90 degree ARHs and he went through a decent amount of O2 sensors. It's just about how the moisture can accumulate on the end and potentially have an issue with the signal. But he drove it a lot, so he had less issues. If you let it sit a while, it might, you know, bring in some moisture and cause O2 issues. But I prefer them to be angled. So if you can relocate them to a 45 degree angle, I think you're you have a better shot of having longer lasting O2s than if you leave them at a 90. Alex Cadell, would you recommend Ford LU80 injectors on a 15 GT for a budget? Nope, absolutely not. Do not get anything for Ford Racing. The reason I'm not a big fan of 80s is it's the it's it's the way the injectors are designed. We can plop in the data, but you're gonna have you're gonna have idle characteristic issues. You're the way it splatters all over the head and drips its way down. I know some other tuners are out there going, "You don't know what you're talking about." Okay, motherfucker. Um, so it you can sort of make them okay, but I prefer LU47s because of the spray pattern. It is just right for that setup. If you're gonna go boosted, Alex Cadell. Do not cheap out. There's a reason ID is a very good injector. It is super proper. The spray pattern is great. If you're on a budget, you can go Deechworks or FICs, and I have seen great results with either of those two injectors. I do not recommend LU80s for anything Coyote-related, period. M. Ragland says, hey, man, late to the party today. What are the general pros and cons of a top-mount turbo kit versus the bottom mount? You know what? I think you got me on that one. I was talking to... Um, I was talking to Aldo Welds, Aldo Maldonado, and he, uh, fucking great guy. <laughs> this is super knowledgeable. By the way, shout out to Aldo for getting me a, a IAT, I'm sorry, a uh, mass airflow sensor in a pinch when I thought that was the issue. Got me one right before I had to do the first qualifying session. Love people that come through him. Brian Luna, Mexico Racing League, all those guys, fucking just great, great guys. Manuel Gomez at midnight just went above and beyond to take care of us at texas 2k and i wanted to just thank them for that they did they did us a huge solid they treated us very well um also nick persiello uh, from whipple he now works at whipple he was hanging out with us all weekend bought us dinner a couple times great guy great guy um <clears throat> i don't know what's the biggest except aesthetically aesthetically you look at top mounts they look great you see them look at that the, what a great looking turbo i just don't know if there's a power benefit to a uh, top mount versus a mid mount versus a bottom mount so you're i'm gonna have to defer to the people that know what the fuck they're talking about like aldo i don't know if junior's on this channel or somebody can and maybe he can chime in on the chat but i don't know power difference aesthetic i think it's just aesthetics of how it looks because if you put top mounts you got to relocate the ac ac lines and the new ac has got some crazy shit that it's hard to get recharged um so i think it's aesthetics meaning how it looks and if there's a power difference i don't know that there is one or isn't so you'll have to talk to someone who actually builds turbo kits quick stanger says alex a little support for the lessons my last performance car was a fox body so i'm learning a lot about the coyote from your episodes thank you very much if you if you don't know anything about coyote mustangs at all and you listen to my live streams and a lot of the videos which i've made the channel more of a tutorial faq kind of learning about Coy and you know what i'm not going to make the most money i'm not going to get 200,000 views and i'm not going to get the most clicks but i'm you're gonna get the most information absolutely and maybe if the channel takes off great but i just don't see it being a million plus subscriber channel because it's information and informational channels are boring and some guy jumping uh the, the grand canyon is a lot more desirable than than me uh telling you about coyote and lu47 injectors uh is there a standalone 6r80 control that you would recommend um not yet brother um i know that motec is working on one and if i'm gonna recommend any one of them right now it's gonna be motec Hey, Alex, it's been a while since I've caught your show live. Any update on the MTD2 Calamar 18 stage one, two, or three? Patiently waiting for some good news. Love the show. I don't think he's going to get on that anytime soon. 
I'm going to I'm gonna play around and <clears throat> see if we can make some forks for the 18 because that seems to be the weak link. And big power cars, according to Ben Calmer, the, the 18 transmission isn't that good. I don't know yet because I don't know of any big power cars that have billet forks to see if anything else fails on the 18 and up MT82. So the jury is still out on that one, but I don't think Ben is going to get on that anytime soon, to be honest with you. So don't hold your breath on that. Hunter Walker says, stupid question, probably, but how many revisions do you think I would need to dial in a basic bolt-on free-flown exhaust 350 manifold 17 GT manual? One tune. <laughs> Hunter Walker, one tune. If you're on pump gas, we got that tune so dialed in, I just say, here you go. But I'm going to have you, da you know, data log it to make sure that you don't have any air leaks or, or fuel leaks or bad injector or anything like that or a bad o2 but usually the, the, the those tunes are one and done hunter walker so if i were you i'd get in there get it ordered and we can dial you in probably that day and i know a lot of you are going to be home now so i suspect we're going to be slammed this month because a lot of you are staying home and getting paid apparently and you're going to get a thousand dollar check from president trump but if you voted democrat in the last election please hand in that check to anybody else do not cash the check if you voted democrat last election why because trump is not your president and if you dare to cash that check you're a fucking hypocrite you cash that check you hypocrite fuck i don't care that you're <laughs> i know shit's bad and you might need it but if you talk shit on this president you should not cash that check <laughs> you should go not my president. Fuck that guy. Rip it up. Yeah, mate. Fuck him. No, you're going to stay nice and quiet and you're going to cash that check because you're a fucking hypocrite motherfucker, aren't you? Yes, you are. Yes, you are, you hypocrite motherfucker. <clears throat> uh, Jim Jones says, holla at your boy. Jim Jones. <laughs> Jim Jones, a rapper? Man, you <laughs> uh, thank, thanks a lot. <laughs> Um, is the stall recommended for the 10 R80? I plan on supercharging the car in the future. I would definitely recommend a, um, a stall, but if you're going to make big boy power I'm saying 800 and up, I've seen the stock converter work really well. Uh, Zach Myers, I think has a stock converter. Zach Meyer runs eights. Uh, we do have a different converter. We run eights. So that'll be interesting, but I think you should get a converter. It's a nice little upgrade. You can do the second gear launch if you're making over 800 rubble horsepower, maybe more, and the car will plant the tire better and the converter will actually help you get you the best ET possible. Uh, in swap cars, is there any problems when making your own intake tube from the fender to get cold air? Christopher Anderson. Christopher Anderson, I would definitely make sure that where the MAF sensor is located, it's as straight as possible, meaning don't make a turn right before it or right after it. Make the, make the longest run that is straight on the cold air where you're going to put the MAF sensor. And then make sure that where it gets its air from, it's not too close to the MAF sensor, meaning the MAF sensor cannot be that close to the filter because what will happen is turbulent air will wig out the MAF signal. If you look at some of the better cold air intakes out there, they have a bit of a, um, a bell mouth, kind of like a Venturi effect to straighten the airflow because the mass airflow sensor is very susceptible and very sensitive to turbulent air. So it's very important you make it as straight as possible and as far away as possible from the filter. Wild Willie says, send me the excess checks. Exactly. You voted Democrat. You talk shit on this president. You said anything negative about this motherfucker. Don't cash that check. Don't be a bitch and cash that check. Turn it in. Send it back. Say, no, nah, return the sender. Fuck it. Or give it to, <laughs> or, or donate it to charity, whatever. But do not cash it if you're a shit talking Trump hater. Wouldn't that go both ways with people not wanting socialism? I guess so, right? That kind of is socialism at that point. So that is kind of, you're right. You're right. Um, Seth Hayden, you're 100% right. If you do not want a government handout, if you don't want a government handout, and you're one of those guys that preaches about hating on socialism, hating on Bernie, hating on this shit, you too cannot cash that check. You will need to just say, um, you know, if you're, if you're righteous, if you are a righteous motherfucker, you can't cash that check either. If you hate socialism and you can't cash that check either. If you hate Donald Trump, I can cash a check. So fuck everybody. I can cash a fucking check. Give me that check. <laughs> 
Thinking of getting 12 or 13 GT500, what mods and brands do you recommend before getting NSR cams? Dude, everything, everything before NSR cams. NSR cams, in my opinion, are the last thing you should do. 10% overdrive, 2.4 upper, E85 fuel system, twin BAPs, 1050Xs. The last thing you should do is cams because it is expensive as hell. The cams are 1200 bucks, and then you got to drop the motor and have someone install them. Big money. You're looking at about a $3,000 bill to install cams. So the last thing I'm going to do is install cams. I'd rather get more boost in the car than cams, unless you're really, really wanting the car to chop. Alex Cadell says, is there any such thing as um, too much injector for an NA? Can I run the IDs and be okay? Okay. When my belt would break on the 15 Mustang, because it was a VMP blower, it ran off of the rear sheath. So the only other thing it was controlling was the AC. I ran that car for a week with 1650s, 1650s, and, and a, with a PMAS 149, 1650s on E85, naturally aspirated. The injectors only use what they need. It's not going to flood the car out. The injectors don't just have a static operating window. They don't just go beep open close all the time like a clock they go based on what the engine needs so if you're not flowing a ton of air the injector is going to go yeah this is all you need this is all you need yes it is a big injector but it is not going to flood the engine out you can run 1050x's na you can run 1300's na but i wouldn't run 1700's na <laughs> um it's just a, a lot of injector but i don't think it's going to be a problem driving around with a big injector on the 85 1050Xs, NA, I know many guys that do NA, 1050Xs, and a fuel system, and then, you know, because they're going to boost it later, the car runs fine for a very long time until they get boost in it, for sure. Government cutting checks to people is the purest form of socialism. Pull yourself up by the bootstraps and find a job that, sh that, a job that isn't shut down. Exactly. Seth, you're not wrong. Seth, you're not wrong. I'm not disagreeing with you at all. 302 Nightmare. Yeah, because Trump's sending the money. I'm telling you, if you don't want to, <laughs> if you don't want to, um, if you're a anti-socialist, hardcore, talking all this shit, yeah, you shouldn't cash a check either because that's socialism, right? I get it. It's a stimulus check. I understand, guys. I'm not stupid. It's a stimulus check because the government is mandating you shut down so not everyone fucking dies because this thing can be crazy uh, and th th this COVID-19 or coronavirus can really take off and really cause issues and kill some people that are that have weak immune systems. So they say, stay your ass home, which we know causes money, money issues. So the government says, well, we told you to stay home. So here's some money. So whatever, cast a fucking check. I don't give a shit unless you voted Democrat. So fuck you. Um, y'all see that fat guy wearing a YDB t-shirt on it's just cheek channel, get beat by his GT350. Yeah. I think he said he had, that guy didn't make a ton of power. Um, the 350 is going to roll out, but the guy who had that shirt, he wasn't like at, that car's level but he wasn't that far he didn't get spanked he said he was actually pretty close <clears throat> but i don't watch it's just a six because i am a straight male and i don't dare watch that fucking garbage no offense to to him but that is just aids to the eyes i aids Andrew Yang is responsible for the $1000 idea no Andrew Yang poor boy wanted to give everybody $1000 a month forever this is a one time check for a thousand bucks just to say, here you go, buddy. You know, we we're telling you to stay home. Shit sucks. Here's a thousand bucks. Time to find us big girls, right? Big girls right now. They have toilet paper and snacks. The blue life. You're not wrong. Big girls, not only do they have snacks, they do have toilet paper. They got to have toilet paper or a bidet. You missed my question, but no big deal. Iced five. Damn it. Iced. What do you think? about people going high compression on coyotes or low compression. I see a lot of people in the Middle East going high compression. High compression, because if you're gonna run race gas, why would you low, run low compression? Tell me what the best thing about running low compression is. Some people would say, you can run more boost. Well, you can run, you have to run more boost on low compression to make the same power you would make on high compression vehicles with less boost. So if you have a 11 to one motor and on 12 PSI, it makes 750. What do you think you would need boost-wise on a 9 one motor to make 750? Fucking 15, 16, 17 PSI. Well, yeah, I run more boost. No, you need more boost to make the same power a high-compression motor can make. Uh, again, given that the fuel is sweet, forget pump gas. Let's talk about race gas. <clears throat> if you have a 
if it's up to me, I would have a 13 to one compression blower motor on E85. It's not going to detonate plenty of octane. It's not going to be a problem. So I love compression. The more compression, the better, because I can make a lot more power with not that much boost. But there you go. High compression, in my opinion, is king. What cam do you recommend for an NA 4.63 valve? Highs IMRC delete, cook headers, off-road, magnet flow cap back, and underdrive pulley. <clears throat> Doesn't Ford Racing sell a cam? Or, you know, some mother thumpers or something like that? Yeah, I, I'm not well-versed in that. In the three-valve world, but the, the typical cam that everyone gets out there, you know, just go ahead and get. It's going to go from 280 horsepower to 300, I mean, for 1000 bucks. <clears throat> All right, I don't know how much they are, but honestly, I'm not a three-valve guy, so mother thumpers or some Ford Racing cams, and they seem to be okay. Those drinking sounds are sexy, Mr. 305. I don't live in the 305. I live in the 561. Also, with a GT500 throttle body, what cam do you recommend? Uh, yeah, honestly, Mother Thumpers or Ford Racing cams. I, I wouldn't go too crazy. Why? Because it's a three valve. <clears throat> Sorry. Baby wipes are smooth on the bum. Yeah, you're right, uh, Chris Newstrom. Once you have baby wipes, it's like having sex with a condom the first, without a condom for the first time. You remember, you remember, think back when you were whatever, and you're being Mr. Safe, and you're out there banging with condoms, and you're like, oh, this is, you know, it's good. It's good, right? Then, you you know, you guys are a little drunk or whatever, and hey, baby, I mean, let me just feel that. Let me just, can I just feel it? Can I just put the tip in? Can I just put the tip in? I just want to feel it. I just want to feel it. And you slide in for the first time, and you're like, oh, my God. Oh, and then you nut after two strokes. You will never go back to using condoms. You just won't, especially if you have a steady girlfriend. You're just like, so then what happens is if you break up with that girlfriend and you go to go back to condoms, <clears throat> you're like, God damn it. <laughs> this sucks. And you're just pumping away and you can't finish. Oh, I can't finish. And then she thinks, I, 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 are you not turned down by me? I'm like, no, baby, I've had condomless sex. This sucks now. Let's just get right to it. <laughs> yeah. Um, where was I going with that? <laughs> where was I going with that? Da, 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 da. I forget. <laughs> I don't even know what question made me think of that. <clears throat> Uh, Towelies here says, don't forget to bring a towel. Uh, 280 horsepower to 300 horsepower. No difference. Still slow and you'd lose a thousand bucks. <laughs> Alex Garcia. That's great. Equals no difference. Still slow. Yeah, dude, I, I wouldn't. Yeah, F, yeah. Justin Katie says, FRPP hot rod cams are the thing everyone gets for the three valves. So you can get them. They're just going to chop it. I don't think it's going to make like a huge, huge difference power wise. It's just going to be big money to make it chop. What are your thoughts about Corona? Are we dying? No, I think if you do normal shit, wash your hands, aren't a slob, don't fucking, you know, don't, don't do nasty, dirty shit. I think you're going to be okay. Obviously avoid crowds for now to keep it on the low, but you're more likely to get the common cold or, um, the regular flu. The regular flu is bad. I got the regular flu for the first time two years ago. I thought I was dying. I just go, I was just in bed going, oh, and about a week later, I came out of it like, holy shit, I was unreal, but I hadn't gotten it in 40 years. I'd never had the flu before and yeah, it hit me hard, but now I'm slightly immune to it. This coronavirus treated the same way. Some people say they have it, tested positive for it, and didn't even feel anything. But the problem is if you're old and have a weakened immune system, your ass can die. I don't think if you're in your between the age of 18 to 40 that you're going to have issues unless you like have we, a weakened immune system. Alex Cadell says, um, thanks for the info. I'm still learning how to mod my car. So far, it's coming well. Thanks to your recommendations. It's rough asking simple cara de mierda questions, cuz I'm ignorant. <laughs> you're not wrong. Yeah, no, I get it. I look, it's hard to find information, especially on forums, because everyone knows everything. <clears throat> Today, I was looking at a forum or a, a, on Facebook and someone says, hey, I have a circuit code. Listen to this. I have a circuit code. Have you guys run into anything like this? Everyone was like, tune, tune, tune. Call your tuner, your tuner. And then they started recommending the tuners. Are you loan tune? You should go to this tuner. Are you this tuner? You should go to this tuner. And I'm going... It's a circuit code. There's something that he doesn't have connected. Circuit. Guys, circuit. It is not a tune issue. You have something not connected or an intermittent connection. It is not a tune issue. But he asked the forum and he got forum answers. That's what he gets. Coronavirus is a 
coronavirus is a two is to distract from the FKA movement. You're not wrong, JT McDowell. There is a movement out there. <laughs> Thanks for the info. Okay, sorry. Biggest short, biggest short, biggest shortcoming of the Gen 3 engine by itself, besides the ticking, some of them have, in your opinion. There isn't really a shortcoming. Stock motor Gen 3s have been eights. Stock motor Gen 3s have made a thousand horsepower pretty easily. Stock motor Gen 3s with boost and E85 are super happy. David Van Norris went eight, low eights with it. Like he could have been the first and seven second stock motor um, coyote, whether it be Gen 1, Gen 2, Gen 3, just overall coyote, but he didn't, he didn't have the, he really didn't want to blow it up. So I don't blame him. But if I had unlimited funds, I would stuff a turbo in a Gen 3 and just go out there and gut it and see if I can run a seven with it and say, fuck it. If it blows up, it blows up. But, uh, besides the tick, I don't think there's that much of a shortcoming of the engine. It's very stout. Once the control packs come out there, meaning Ford racing auto control pack and the manual control packs, you're going to see those motors in everything. And you're going to see really stupidly fast Fox bodies. Cause they got 12 to one compressions, great heads, big valves. They're going to roll out. They're going to roll out. Hell, if I can find a gen three, bottom end i would swap my gen 2 bottom end for it because of more compression plain and simple should i sell my gen 2 6 r80 for a gen 3 10 r80 what are you going to put it in uh f-150 s550 what are you going to put it in the control system dictates what transmission you can use so if you have a gen 2 control system you cannot use a gen 3 10 r80 in a gen 2 control system meaning a control pack the only reason you would buy a Gen 3 10 or 80 is to use it in a Gen 3 control pack or a Gen 3 vehicle, period. There is no other reason to get it. Uh, okay. Have you ever heard of the new double spark plugs? Double cheese platoon. <laughs> no, get out of here. Uh, crazy. Um, COVID-19 was created to get rid of the old generation so it saves on Social Security and the retirement payments. <laughs> That's fucked up. <laughs> Is a non-living thing a cell that attaches to itself to your cells and it just makes duplicates of itself? Your body senses the threat and starts fighting it. Fever and mucus is a way to fight viruses. There you go. So I guess we have doctors on on on, uh, on tap here. Hi, Alex. Big fan from Mexico. Planning on getting a Lunt tune, of course. Cars of 2011 bought and registered in Mexico. Going free-flowing exhaust, Alberto. You don't say that word. Are you allowed to turn? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God, Alberto. You you literally asked the worst question you could ask. This is how this question should go. So everybody look at Alberto Castro Molina's question. And this is how you ask the question. Hi, Alex. Big fan from Mexico. Planning on getting a Lund tune. I have a free-flowing exhaust. Will there be any issues? <laughs> he literally was like, you know, I want to get you in trouble with all the government agencies. So I'm going to ask these questions. Fuck no. You saw what happened. You saw what happened to the diesel guys who got in trouble with you know who. And they had to pay a big fine. And there's still other supposedly lawsuits pending. That's what I want to avoid. Because we Look, we're not a shop. We don't take things in. Take it. We don't, We're not a shop. So I think we're good. But once the verbiage starts getting out there and you guys start answering, then people start going, hey, why are they saying those things? Shh. We want to stay off of anybody's radar. We're not doing anything illegal, but we just want to stay off of anybody's radar. So ask the right questions. <clears throat> How the hell do I use the three seashells? You know, I did watch Demolition Man, and I was actually mad at the end of the movie that they didn't tell us how the three seashells worked, which was to wipe your ass in the future. And Taco Bell was every restaurant. And people had rat burgers in the underground. <laughs> it's a great movie. Thinking about living my Mopar life, leaving my Mopar life behind. 300 CSRT8. And 450 Mustang GT. But I'm worried about the third gear braking and what mods. Well, Rob Zilla Garage. Um, get a 6R80 car. Right? 6R80 car um, is going to do pretty good up until about 700 wheel. And then you're going to have to start upgrading the transmission. An MT82 car might last you a very long time. But yeah, the third gear can go at any time. It's the gears themselves. Now, if you want to upgrade transmission to like a 
spin calendar stage three, you never have to worry about that again. But you do have to get a different clutch because it's 26 blind input. Uh, Kona Coyote S550 says, for my 19 GT 10R80 E85 Luntune, should I go with the 305 35 nt 5 r or Mickey Thompson 275-45-18? I don't have experience with either tire. I can't decide. You should get a 305-45-17 ET Street R if you're going to drag race it. If you're going to drag race it, 305 45 17 Mickey Thompson ET Street R. If you want a regular everyday tire, get the NT05R. The 275 45 18, I don't know enough of. Is it a Mickey Thompson ET Street SS? I would I would take a Mickey Thompson ET Street SS over any Nitto drag radio. But if you really want to drag race the car and it's not your daily, you can get a 305 45 17 ET Street R, in my opinion. That's the best tire out there for your power level. David Martin gave me a dollar. Thank you very much. I appreciate that, brother. Uh, metal, 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 LOL says, Gen 3 short block, Gen 2 heads, and Gen 1 cams and timing on the 2012. Will it hold up? Oh, yeah. Um, Manuel Gomez's customer did that, and it went 880 in a Gen 1 California special. Beautiful car. They called it the 321 package. Very cool. I just bought a 2013 GT from Copar. MTD2 has long tubes and Corsa cap back in a boss manifold. JLT intake. How do I know if it's E85 or 93? <laughs> if you bought it from Copar, it's probably 93, right? <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's probably 93. Oh, you bought the whole GT. I don't know. Honestly, I don't know. Uh, you'd have to pull the tune somehow, but I don't know if you can do it, especially if it's tuned by us. You're, you're going to have a bad time. going to try to ask this correctly, Bandy says. Plan to have catted long tubes in an emissions controlled state maryland any possible issues if you have all of your emissions equipment present bandy you should not have any issues because we don't turn off anything we don't make it we don't we don't fool anything if all of your emissions equipment is installed car should pass emissions without any issue plain and simple let me scroll down, make sure I'm not missing anybody. There we go. There we go. Okay. looks like it's uh, nice and easy. I'm going to start telling you guys to not pay me anymore because I want to catch up on some of the questions that I didn't get. Just do not pay um, because if I leave and say goodbye and then all of a sudden you you get three questions across the board, it's going to fuck me up. And then I'm going to be, I'm going to feel so bad and I'm going to try to get you on the, you know, on the backside and try to answer your question later on. But no more paid questions for now. We'll just try to get everyone uh, done here and just talk a little bit on the uh, the non-paid side chat. Jesus. And as I say that, two people pay. Hey, Alex, what's King Daddy now? Boss 302 or Gen 3? Gen 3. Gen 3. Gen 3 is King Daddy, plain and simple. Gen 3 is King... Actually, King Daddy right now is Predator. Predator is King Daddy, plain and simple. Um, it's a coyote. Guys, it's a coyote, so it's it's coyote-based. So the Predator is King Daddy. But I would do a Gen 3 over a Gen 1 boss motor because of the compression, cams, heads, and valves. <laughs> Everything is better uh, in a Gen 3 than a boss 302 motor. <clears throat> uh tango says 19 gt and i've been to the dealership multiple times for the clutch being at the top of the travel and i'm sick of dealing with them what's a good aftermarket clutch that maintains daily drivability mantic has been great to me i love them very much and uh it's a it's probably the best in terms of drivability clutch and high horsepower potential clamping and and um holding power or holding capability than Anything else that I've seen. Now, McLeod makes a great clutch. Exeddy makes a decent clutch, too. I just really am a fan of Mantic clutches. Yes, they're expensive, but you're pretty much only going to buy that clutch once. And then the replacement frictions are actually pretty cheap, and it is a rebuildable clutch. So you don't have to buy the clutch multiple times. Buy it once, rebuild it. Car should be good for a very long time. Orbi Altizer says, uh, <clears throat> no, he's talking to Bandy, so let him talk to Bandy. Alex, with adding a ported boss... To Beefcake's Paxton Stage 2 kit be a good idea? Yeah. You're going to have some higher RPM um, because, you know, the Paxton likes to flow some air and the higher velocity, the more power the manifold can feed the engine at higher RPM. So it'll be very much, uh, it was very much a, a happy, it's a very much, a, it's very, very much a desirable combination. AT manifold or boss manifold and a Paxton is desirable. Emmanuel Fernandez says, I was about to pay for my questions, but in case you can read it. I have a 2014 Stage 3 Roush. Intake, 
mid pipe, 82 millimeter pulley. My car will randomly turn off once I put it in neutral sometimes and will bog when I take off in a race, rarely. Any ideas? The bogging is probably traction control. The shutting off seems to happen with aftermarket tunes based on a couple of things. I think it's the minimum spark allowed for idle control and a couple of other things that we might be able to fix a manual. If you are tuned by Lund Racing, we have fixes for that. Um, it is it is kind of involved, but if you're tuned by us, I know exactly what to do. If you're not tuned by us, then I would urge your tuner to take a look at the uh, areas that uh, allow spark to go too too far down, and it might cause the car to stall. Emmanuel. Okay, is there a difference between Gen 2 Coyote and the 302 Boss? Yeah, yes. The part the cams are parked in a different position, but in terms of uh, uh, mechanically, not that much. I think the cams are similar. Uh, the heads are better in the ported uh, in the in the Boss 302 because I think they're CNC'd. And I think they both can take about the same amount of power. I think the Boss 302 is a little bit of a better engine. Um, so there isn't a huge difference, but I think the Boss is a better engine overall than the Gen 2. How much boost will it take a stock Gen 1 to run mid-9s? Uh, will it live? Um, probably won't live. So it's going to be like 15 PSI. 15 PSI and E85, maybe, maybe a little more. 15 PSI, E85, maybe 16 PSI. So if it's a VMP... 2.3 you need a 69 millimeter pulley it'd be like a 950 940 car 69 you know it's gonna need it's gonna be big it's gonna need 85 um paxton you're gonna need 14 15 psi also so yeah about 15 psi or so 15 16 psi should run mid nines and i do not think it'll hold up for a very long time because that's like 750 rural horsepower so maybe more a little more can you get a gt500 can you get 500 of na gen 1 boost or will it be cheaper can you get 500 of NA Gen 1 or Boost will be cheaper. Boost will be cheaper. Nader Saleh. What is needed to upgrade to a 323 TVS on a 12 GT500 for pump gas? MU52 injector, but you don't need it, but it's it's desired. MU52 injector, which is a, a stock 13 to 14 GT500 injector. I would get twin booster pumps just in case. Um, twin booster pumps or twin fuel pump voltage boosters from VMP or something like that. So injector, get a bigger cold air since you're there already and um twin booster pumps and you should be okay to put a 2-3 in a 11 to 12 gt500 james h says a little support for the channel thank you very much i appreciate that uh hi alex 2018 a10 tuned by you with a steeda intake without the insert on e85 i'm planning adding free flowing exhaust inch and seven eighths headers do i need a revision who i can't believe it's idling without the insert 18 mustangs with a steeda intake without the insert don't like to idle so if you're having idle issues trooper 50 let me know and i'll try to see what we can do to make it idle better but you'll have to put the insert back in making it a 120 millimeter but if you're not having any issues and you want to add free flow and exhaust? Yes, you'll need a revision. Let me know. Actually, on E85, you will not need a revision if you're already tuned for E85. If you're not tuned on E85 yet, you'll need a revision if you're going to run that exhaust setup that you just mentioned. F150 S550 says PMAS 123 millimeter new open box for sale. I think PMAS only makes a 120, but that's okay. A 15 to 17 GT, 300 bucks. So anyone that needs a PMAS, 123 millimeter new in box uh f-150 s550 has them for sale for 300 bucks that's actually a nice way of getting it out there for like 10,000 views to hey look if they watched at this time <clears throat> alex the story was about to go from tp to wipes back to tp alex the story was about going from tp to wipes back to tp yeah that's crazy shit big daddy trucker says hola popoto <laughs> Popoto. <laughs> the fuck is that? Did you know that uh, a straw, if you're Mexican, what's the word for straw? Like popote? That, it doesn't make it popote. Popote. Uh, in uh, Puerto Rican Spanish, it's sorbeto, like sorbet, it's sorbeto. And I don't know, I've heard some Cuban and I'm just like, wow. So the word straw in Spanish is said like 15 different ways. Alex Cadell says, hey, Alex, can I quad turbocharge my car and Whipple charger for all the IAT heat cuts? <laughs> can you get a 2 Oiko boost 400 horsepower? Sure, why not? Uh, 2 Oiko boost. I mean, maybe once. You know, who knows? 
Michael Charlton, Alex, would you do a T stat with the Paxton setup or is it not needed? Thanks, Bicho. Um, I'd do it. It's not. It's nice, and you don't need a revision. Okay, a, term, a thermostat is a mechanical advantage. It just opens a little earlier and makes the car run a little bit cooler. And the fans are already preset to come on earlier on our tune, so you do not need a revision for a 170 thermostat. Uh, Trooper 50 says, thanks, I have no issues with the car runs like a boss. Badass, Trooper. Glad to hear that the uh, Steeda uh, intake is working well for you. Um, Coyote Car Guy in the house. Guys, give him a follow. Guy's a great guy. Provides a ton of content. Super nice guy. Give him a follow, Coyote Car Guy. Pipote. Edwin Martinez says, pipote. So a straw in Mexican Spanish is pipote. And then David Martin says, popote. Albert Cas Castro Molina says, popote. Big Daddy Trucker says, I was trying to say papito. <laughs> Force Fed Coyote says, popote. <laughs> hey, so it's popote. No more ejecto taillight, cuz. Nope, no. Nope, uh, I glued that bitch in nice. Black girls, give it to me, daddy. <laughs> Black girls say, give it to me, daddy. If I'm going to go 3.6 from 3.8 retune, 15 Mustang packs in. No. If you're going, no. no. You don't need to retune. Just log it for us, and you should be good to go. Um, Ken Abernathy says, buy a 30,000 built motor, TR6060 TT. 12 s197 from or or tt my current s550 um ooh, twin turbo your current s550 um fic 1650 drivability i have it in my fairmont no issues on e85 with a pms 149 at all uh coyote car guy says thanks alex no problem edwin martinez says sorry i've been quiet was looking over the car no problem brother um hopefully the car made it it looked so good going down the track edwin it's nice to have a car that's super dialed in you've owned it for a very long time and it's nice to see a car that's just you've grown with and it's just it just looked really good and congrats on making it to the semifinals. actually you made it to the finals if i'm not mistaken on your one on your uh your class congrats on that i think you made it to the finals <laughs> Uh, okay all right i'm gonna start getting out of here i've been on for an hour and a half on the money stop paying me guys stop paying me on the questions jesus um you guys saw my crank a pallet video earlier today so watch that if you didn't catch that i released it at around two o'clock so make sure that you watch the crank a pallet video and then i'm sure you're going to play this back at the gym that is closed because of the coronavirus because you guys have to buy a whole bunch of toilet paper what the fuck? Crazy. So yeah, it's been a crazy week with all the, 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 the coronavirus stuff, the Texas 2K stuff. I'm going to try to get out to a rental or the test and tune this Friday if it's open. So if anybody knows if uh, Palm Beach International Raceway is still holding a test and tune because it doesn't get that packed. But I'd like to go to make some 60 foot hits to see if the stuttering still persists in the fair. If it doesn't, I'll run it out the back and see if I can get deep eights out of it and uh go from there casey cardena says 800 mile boss reel two low to mid thirty thousand dollar range range thoughts very good if it's got that low miles and it's in the mid 30s buy it now okay i'm gonna get out of here guys thank you thank you thank you for watching i will be on this thursday on that dating channel i've had a bunch of little things go on since the last time you saw me i wasn't on last week i apologize for that but i had to get ready for texas 2k so i didn't really want to get on and try to get on you know because i was at the track late at night so thank you guys for watching for those of you that tune into my uh dating channel you'll see me thursday and i'll try to get some texas 2k recap videos up tomorrow or the day after so you can see how my texas 2k experience went thanks for listening guys we'll talk to you later